Hello my fellows, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to tell you and talk about how I taught myself to stop overthinking so much. There came a point in my life where I realized that overthinking and overanalyzing all the situations in my life was making me feel so stressed out. It actually wasn't helping me at all, even though a lot of us, me included, maybe think that overthinking a situation is actually good because we're going to come up with like the most amazing solution. And I'm going to tell you, it does not. Overthinking actually for me has made me made, make terrible choices in my life and has stopped me from creating. It's stopped me from connecting with people. It's stopped me from being a better version of myself. Overthinking has pretty much led me to being so self-isolated and uh, not not growing in a way that is good for me and i want to share a couple of those experiences so that maybe if you're having the same thing i can let you know what i did and that might help you out on your journey as well one of the ways i used to overthink was when i would be talking to a friend or a family men men member or my partner I maybe would say something and in my own mind I would reel from what I said. Maybe it was something to do with uh, you know, a, a judgment that I made about somebody and then as soon as it came out of my mouth I was like, ugh, why did I say that? Or I over exerted myself or overstepped on something uh, in particular in the conversation and then I would, I would walk away from that and I would just overthink the whole situation. I would, I would obsess over, oh my gosh, is my friend going to hate me now? Um, why did I even say that? Like, wait, does that make me a bad person that I said that in my mind or even like out loud, I said that and now they're going to think that I, you know, am not a sensitive person or that I don't, I'm not loving or something like that. And it would just kind of explode into this like cacophony of confusion and at the end of all of it I would just end up feeling sick because I would just overthink that situation for hours and hours afterwards um, until I don't know <laughs> until until it just ran me into the ground I guess and when I started just realizing that we are humans we say shit sometimes that we don't actually mean and that's okay we all make mistakes it's we're kind of wrapped up in this idea of being perfect even though being perfect is inattainable <laughs> for for the human experience and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves in that regard um, so when i started thinking in a little bit of a different way realizing that okay yeah we say some stupid shit sometimes how do i how can I relieve my mind so that I'm not obsessively overthinking about what a terrible person I am for saying that? I, I honestly just decided to let them know. I was like, hey friend, I said this thing and I feel really bad about it. That's not me. Can we like talk about it? And you know what? Most of the time they wouldn't have even noticed. <laughs> Most of the time, they wouldn't have even thought the way that I was thinking about myself because of what I said, because they understand that too. They're a human as well. They know that they've said some shit in their lives too that makes them feel bad and overthink things and start blowing situations up, making a mountain out of a molehill kind of situation. So realizing that we're all humans, we all make mistakes, we all say shit sometimes that doesn't align with who we actually are and it shocks us when it does come out sometimes and that's honestly kind of a good thing because when we do say random shit that gives us an opportunity to start reflecting on who we are and you know wh why did that come up and is there something that i would like to heal or change about myself in order to be the better version of myself that i would like to be and just having an open honest conversation with whoever it is that you said that to is is so much easier and better than just reaming yourself into the ground and overthinking it for, for hours and hours and hours. So honesty and just speaking your truth and 
remembering that you are a human being and it's okay to make mistakes. Another really detrimental area of my life that overthinking caused me so much stress is during sleep. <laughs> I would wake up in the middle of the night and I do still sometimes, but I have a method now of how to, how to handle that. But I would wake up in the middle of the night and at like three, four, five in the morning and I would just lay there and my brain would just be awake and buzzing. And I would just be thinking about all the things that I need to do, all the things that I said, all the things that I feel behind on, I feel rushed, I feel stressed. I'm behind a lot of overthinking when I'm trying to get some sleep. And this drove me absolutely crazy. And it really amped up my anxiety. I used to be so scared of getting up early in the morning that like it like developed this fear of getting up early because I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would be overthinking. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> I would just be overthinking and overanalyzing my situations. And then I wouldn't get enough sleep. And then I'd have to wake up early and I would be so tired. I'd be so tired and drained. And it didn't help anything. It didn't do anything for me. I didn't find the magical solution when I was awake for two hours in the middle of the night. And now I'm tired and I'm up in the morning and, you know, things weren't resolved. and. And that's like how I've pretty much lived like the majority of my life up until, you know, quite recently when I was like, you know what? I'm fucking sick of this. I don't want to do this anymore. So if you're a chronic over overthinker, when you wake up in the middle of the night, what I really recommend you try, um, for me, meditation has just been, I know it's kind of cliche, but honestly, if you want to start controlling your mind and helping your emotional state and your stress levels, meditation is the top dog. It is the top diggity dog. And you can do meditation in like a lot of different ways. Um, I'm going to upload meditation actually for those of you who have overwhelmed during sleep. And uh, I'm going to put that uh, on my channel as well. And I think that the biggest thing about waking up in the, in the middle of the night when you're trying to sleep and you're feeling overwhelmed, you're, you're really overthinking something. There is, it's funny because your brain believes that you're being logical in that moment. Your brain believes that you can figure it out at 3 AM. And the reality is that's not true. And it's going to stop you from getting the well needed sleep that you actually, your body actually wants and needs. So to stop that from happening, as soon as you wake up, this is what I do, what I, and it's very effective. As soon as I wake up, if I start to overthink something, I catch myself and I ask myself, Emily, is this logical? Is this going to help me? Am I going to find the solution right now? The answer is always no, <laughs> unless you have like an amazing epiphany dream or something like that. The answer is always going to be no. So how can you, in those moments when you're trying to sleep, how can you calm your mind down enough and release whatever it is that you're thinking about so that you can actually get the proper sleep that you need in order to find the solution? And what I like to do with that is, is catch myself first, ask myself, is this logical? No, it's not logical. And change the way that you view the overthinking in that moment. Give yourself permission to write it down, even have a journal beside your bed, write it down. This is what I do. Um, I don't need it anymore though, because I've done it so much. And once you practice, it actually gets easier and better and you won't need this anymore. So catch yourself. Is this logical? Grab your notebook, write it down. If it's a sticky thought, write it down. Give yourself permission when you're writing that, that, that thought down, that overthinking thought, that when you write it, you, you do not have to think about it anymore. It's logged. It's there. You're, you, you can come back to it later if you want to and close your journal, put it up on the side table and then do a guided meditation. Distract your mind because sometimes when I'm really overthinking, I'll try and do like, you know, a mystical music or like ambient rain sounds. But I find if you aren't being guided or if you aren't listening to people talking, then it's 
much easier for me to fall back into the overthinking. So that's a little, a little tip, a little trick for you um, if you'd like to try that. Um, guided meditations specifically. So catching it, asking if it's logical, writing it down if it's sticky and you can't let go of it, and then putting on like a nice guided meditation so that you can actually start relaxing your mind and getting yourself back to sleep. Another area of overthinking that I have really tried to practice catching myself on is when we use the word if. I used to project myself into the future a lot and when I had my very intense periods of anxiety, that's what would rule my life is this word if. So I would obsess over, well, what if that happens? And what if that happens? And what if this is going to happen? And what if, what if I say that? And what if, what if, what if, what if? And what if is a paralyzing and crippling statement because you are creating situations in your mind that are not true. And most of the time, <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to start realizing this once you start analyzing like yourself and like how you speak to yourself and, and the way that you understand situations. For me, the what ifs were always bad. The what ifs were always negative. What if they don't like me? What if I don't get the job? What if my, I don't know, I've fall out of a tree and break my arm and now I can't, you know, do the thing that I wanted to do on the weekend. Like really ridiculous stuff that just like exploded the narrative in the future. And once you start projecting especially negative thoughts of what ifs, it paralyzes you from moving forward, making progress, or just doing anything <laughs> that helps you in this moment right now. And a tool that I started using to combat the what if is self-awareness. Really all the things to do with our mind is all about self-awareness and ob observing ourselves. And then we have the opportunity to change the things that we are observing. So when I used to, and it's all about catching yourself too, right? So when I started realizing that my mind kept saying, oh, what if this and it was a negative thing that would make me feel sick and it would make me feel scared and I wouldn't want to go forward or do anything. So when you start thinking, what if I don't get the job and then I'm going to be broke and then I'm going to be not going to be able to eat or pay my rent. Okay. Instead of projecting, what if I don't get the job, recognize that thought coming in understand that that is a negative thought that's going to start making you feel a lot more scared than you have to be because in reality we don't know what the future is going to hold for us we don't we think we do but we don't and <laughs> there are so many opportunities for spontaneity and possibility and opportunity that we cut ourselves off from if we are projecting if we are projecting negative thoughts into the future negative ideas, negative uh, patterns of behavior, all these things. So when I hear myself think, what if he doesn't like me? What if he doesn't think I'm pretty? Instead of that, I think I, I follow up that thought with, what if I'm actually just good enough right now? What if I am beautiful? What if I do get that job? What if I am able to collect enough money once I get that job to have a beautiful tea party tea outing with my friend? And this has really helped with my overthinking and projecting just falsities into my future. And it, it helps you stay in the moment more because the more we stay in the present moment, the less we feel fear or have anxieties or over stress about what's to come. Because most of the time, things actually work out better than we think they do. And if we keep projecting our fears into the future and our what ifs, then that really closes us off from experiencing life in a beautiful and meaningful way. I used to put a lot of precedent on my overthinking mind because I 
associated overthinking and overanalyzing with intelligence. And I have come to understand that just because you overthink something or you're trying to desperately plan in your brain all the different avenues of what your future is gonna hold, you actually rob yourself of enjoying the moment that you're in and you cause so much unnecessary stress in your life. And it wasn't until I started understanding that particular idea that logic and analyzation does not equal intelligence Okay, you, you don't have to be an overthinker to be intelligent. Those two things don't mean the same thing. And that took me, <laughs> I know it kind of sounds dumb thinking about it now, but that's what I thought. I thought being over analyzing actually made me more intelligent when really it started to drive me crazy. So it tr yeah, it started to drive me mad and it made me really upset. It made me very stressed out. So starting to reel in the overthinking habits that we have created for ourselves and that's just it they're habits we can unlearn those habits and if all the things that i talked about in this video those were the, the starting things that i used to start unlearning my overthinking habits so that i could actually have some goddamn peace because <laughs> it gets very stressful and we don't need this level of stress in our lives. So I hope you found a couple little tiddly bits in this video that might help you with your overthinking processes. And I would love to hear about your experiences with overthinking and overanalyzing. Uh, just pop those down in the comments. And what tools do you use for your overthinking and overanalysis? I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. I hope you have a beautiful day. Mwah.